Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Colina for those of you who might be new and for those of you who are not, as you guys know, I do beauty and vlog videos on my channel. Today's video is going to be something completely different than the content that I bring to my channel and it's going to be the disappearance of Matthew Weaver Jr. This case is a case that hasn't been plastered all over the media, at least from my knowledge. I don't really watch a lot of TV, but um, I haven't really seen a lot of things even online. I have a true passion for these cases. I seriously love to keep up with cases that I want to know what has happened to this person. And it's a very sad case because there's not a lot of details and it's been a mystery of what could have happened. So Matthew Weaver Jr. was a 21 year old living out in Simi Valley, California. He had been a resident of Simi Valley for a very long time, I believe. He lived with his stepmom, Brooke Tipton, who raised him since he was a toddler, so they were very close with each other. Up until recently, he had decided that he wanted to move out to a nearby city, which only happened to be, I believe, a 20 to 25 minute drive, and that city was Granada Hills, California. The reason that he mainly moved out to the city was because it was going to be a lot closer to his new job, which his father actually happened to work for the same company. His father, Matthew Weaver, sir, worked as a lineman for an AT&T subcontractor, I believe, from what I've read. So he was moving out there just so he could be closer to his job and he was looking forward into following in his dad's footsteps. So on Thursday, August 9th, Matthew went ahead and picked up his paycheck from his father, Matthew Weaver Sir, and he had mentioned to him that he was actually going to be going out that night with a new female friend. Later on that night, Matthew ended up driving to his female friend's house and I believe he picked her up right after midnight. So the two ended up partying together for the next few hours. And by the way, not to get myself too way ahead, but this person's or female friend's identity has never been out there. No one knows who she is. No one knows anything about her. All we know is that she was a person that was last seen with Matthew as far as everyone knows. After the two partied together, Matthew ended up driving to her house again and dropping her off. It is believed that the time that he dropped her off was between 4.30 to 5 in the morning on Friday. So after Matthew ended up dropping off his female friend at her home, cell phone records show that Matthew was traveling towards the Malibu Canyon. So at 5.15 a.m., Matthew's car is traveling on Mulholland Highway. And by 5.35 a.m., Matthew's car turns on to Stunt Road. So I've read different versions of what exactly happens next. But Matthew posted a video or a picture. But while he was on Stunt Road and Saddle Peaks parking lot, he posted a Snapchat. Either it was a picture or a video. Um, he posted um, either one of those. He posted a view of the trail that he was on and I believe that was between 5 30 to 6 a.m. that morning now around 7 in the morning Matthew's car is traveling past a white gate that was suspiciously left open at Rosa's overlook and it has been said that it normally remains locked and typically should only be accessible by first responders and law enforcement officials. And the keys are also supposed to say, do not duplicate. So later on, they ended up finding out that someone got a hold of those keys and they ended up duplicating them, but they don't know in whose hands they ended up in, but clearly they ended up in the wrong hands. Now at 7.15 a.m., Matthew's car is captured on security camera and the vehicle is driving on the Topanga Tower motorway towards Rosa's Overlook. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, GPS signal on Matthew Weaver Jr.'s cell phone tracks him at the Topanga Trail at 7.15. And by 7.28 a.m., Matthew's car reaches the end of the trail at the area of Rosa's Overlook. Now, Matthew's family did end up hiring a private investigator. And what the private investigator found was a surveillance footage from a construction site nearby. And he ended up seeing in the surveillance video that people were coming in and out of the same location where Matthew's car was found or last seen. And 
and that footage has never been released. I believe just uh, the private investigator has it or maybe even police. And that makes me wonder that someone, those people that were caught on surveillance camera must know something because if those people were coming in and out and they had seen Matthew's car and I'm sure they've heard of the story by now, they would have came forward and let the authorities know that they had seen something but from my knowledge is they haven't been informed by anyone that night um that happened to see something so so it kind of makes me wonder if those people were involved or not now three to four hours later this part is what makes me wonder so much um the fact that he was still trying to contact someone and he was still in the same location matthew ended up contacting the same female friend he had just partied with that night but she never answered his phone call due to the fact that she was at work and at 11 49 a.m she ended up texting him saying i'm at work what's up and at 11 53 a.m matthew jr's phone tracks his last text message which was to that same female friend he had texted and it read like some crazy ish is going on I just want to talk while I have a chance. And that was the last time anyone had heard or had any kind of contact with Matthew. So the following day, which happens to be on August 11th on a Saturday, I believe it was between the hours of 12 to 1 a.m., a pair of hikers ended up finding Matthew Jr.'s car. And they reported that while they were calling 911, they heard um, a female's voice and a male's voice uh, saying that somebody has a gun and where exactly they ended up finding the car they mentioned it was in Topanga Overlook and Rosa's Overlook but I'm not too sure if those two places are the same exact thing or just Rosa's Overlook at approximately 1 30 a.m. police arrived at the scene and found Matthew Jr.'s vehicle down two miles off the dirt trail from Stunt Road so since the hikers had mentioned that they did hear someone screaming, somebody has a gun, they ended up sending helicopters and canines in search of those people who might have screamed. And while police were searching around the car to see if anything was out of order or maybe something might look suspicious, they did realize that um, the car had been damaged from the inside of the trunk and the car was basically hanging off a cliff. So since Matthew's car was registered to his father, Matthew Weaver Sir, uh, authorities actually ended up showing up at his house at 5 a.m. in the morning and notifying him that his car had been found and if they had any idea where his son may be. Obviously, his father, Matthew Sir, had no idea where his son was, so he ended up contacting or going to his apartment complex and asking the landlord if he knew where Matthew was or if he had seen Matthew. Landlord said he hadn't seen him in a few days. So Matthew's father ended up contacting his friends and family and no one had heard of Matthew or no one knew of Matthew's whereabouts. So that same Saturday, the Lost Hills and Malibu search and rescue ended up doing a search with canine and cadaver dogs. Now at the time, police were unable to gather any type of evidence from Matthew's car, so they didn't end up finding one single thing, no key, no wallet, no nothing. And basically, his case was a dead end because they couldn't find any type of evidence other than the things that they had found, which was his car and the private investigator which found the surveillance video. Um, and I believe at the time, the family did end up setting a reward for any um, tips on information where Matthew's whereabouts may be or any type of information. And I think it was set at $50,000. Here comes the very interesting part out of the whole entire case. And I had mentioned that they hadn't found anything, no keys, no clothing, nothing from Matthew in his car but up until recently that completely changed because the family got in contact with a volunteer who was willing to take his drone and 
um, take video and pictures of that same area where it was last known that Matthew was at. So in January 10th, they had over 2,000 people looking over that footage and the pictures that the drone had flown over the canyons. And they actually ended up finding some very interesting things. Thanks to those drone footage and pictures, they were able to find his BMW key, which were found not too far from where his car was located. And they also found his Angel's baseball cap and that was easily identified by his ex-girlfriend because his ex-girlfriend happened to purchase that baseball hat for him and also next to matthew's baseball hat they ended up finding a ripped white t-shirt which they also believe it might belong to matthew and with the bmw key they were able to find it as a match with his car so it is official that the key is the key that belongs to matthew's bmw car also, I just want to mention that someone made a point that why would Matthew text this girl he was partying with that he had just met and they were just becoming friends? Um, why would he have texted her and not his family? That is something that kind of makes me think and I'm like, I don't know. I don't want to put anything out there or blaming someone, but to me, it's kind of odd. Um, he had just met this girl. He texted a girl that he barely even knew when he has i'm sure his family's contact number i would for sure contact my family before anyone else if i felt threatened um i don't know it's just kind of weird the events how the events unfolded to me um but there's always room for you know the unthinkable so those are my thoughts at least but as far as i know the girl has been interviewed and she's been cleared from any wrongdoing so there's that so so far that's all the information or um, evidence or any tips that they got that they have so far and as of right now they haven't found anything else but they still have the tip line opened and I will make sure to leave all that information here on the screen or down in the description box those who were close to Matthew say he had a true passion for rescuing animals and he loved racing cars I actually felt kind of a connection while looking at his pictures with um, this dog and I could just feel that Matthew seemed like he was a good person he didn't seem like he was into any trouble and that's what drew me more into this case especially him being so young he still had a whole life ahead of him so there are theories as to what has happened to matthew and a lot of people have different theories for me i have one theory and i believe that this might be something to look at so as far as my theories for what i believe has happened to matthew i have one theory and i find it so weird how a lot of people haven't really spoken about the things that have been happening in malibu and when we think of malibu we think about you know malibu the beach and it's this complete safe place but if you've gone to malibu to the canyons at night it is a completely scary place it's pitch black and it is honestly quite frightening if i could be honest with you guys um because i love going to the canyons i love going on late night rides and i have gone to the malibu canyons and it's extremely pitch black there's no one walking so someone could easily just pop out of the nowhere and do something and no one will ever know so i just want to say i have on my notes so there has been so many people that have gone missing in Malibu and no one is really talking about it. And I've noticed that not a lot of people who go missing in Malibu, um, their story is not being plastered all over social media, just exactly like Matthew's. Um, so I feel like that's kind of like a red flag. I don't know if either the Malibu police are trying to not really make too much noise and trying to kind of cover it i am not sure but this is my theory 
I feel like something is going on in Malibu. There might be a serial killer and no one wants to really talk about it because they don't want to scare people or the people that live in Malibu. But there has been many disappearances in Malibu and one of them actually, one of the girls that went missing, she actually turned up dead and they found her bones, I think, about five years later after she went missing. So the people who have gone missing in Malibu is Maitrice Richardson. Um, I believe she went missing um, in the year 2010. 2010, I believe. Um, and she was found dead. For Maitrice, her story, I first remember hearing about it was on disappeared which is an id discovery tv show that i am obsessed with and if you guys haven't watched it i recommend it to you guys who are all into mystery cases disappearance cases or anything like that um i first heard of her story and um from what i know of her story was that she had been acting kind of weird some way somehow she ended up getting arrested she was actually in custody of the malibu police and they released her and from there she went missing and no one ever knew about her up until they found her remains and the second one that i knew that was very popular i don't think i saw this one on disappeared at least i don't think so um i think i found this one on youtube by a youtuber i think it might have been kendall Wright, but i'm not too sure um so the second one is elaine park i think that's how you pronounce her name now she went missing in january 28th of 2017 now her case is extremely extremely weird it's kind of similar to matthews because all they found was her car they found the keys in the ignition and they found her personal belongings except for her they don't know what happened to her all they did was find the car but as far as as right now there still hasn't been any new leads to her um case so i find that pretty weird and i believe her car was found right off the pacific coast highway so i don't know these these stories you kind of put them together and you're like there's something weird going on in malibu and no one's talking about it so now for the last one i honestly it's so ironic how i was going to do this video and my boyfriend happens to turn on the TV and he turns it to the news channel. As I'm cleaning, I hear that a woman has gone missing in Malibu. This was on Saturday. And when I heard that, I literally just stopped whatever I was doing and looked at the TV and I looked at my boyfriend. I was like, oh my God, I can't believe that I'm about to do this story and talking about the people who have been missing or gone missing in malibu and then another story breaks out that there's a woman missing in malibu now this girl's name is jennifer michelle lobert sorry if i'm mentioning her last name or saying her last name wrong um she was last seen on thursday this past thursday and i believe she was actually just a tourist i think she came from colorado um and her car was also found right off the pacific coast highway and i think the last time anyone saw her was at 11 p.m so as far as i know she still hasn't been found i hope that she is found safe and sound um but like i said my theory is that all these cases all these people who have been missing and gone missing in malibu is i feel like there might be a connection um, but why hasn't the Malibu Police Department done anything about it or they don't seem like they're doing anything um, or bringing more awareness to these missing person cases is kind of weird to me. Um, so let me know what you guys' thought might be, where you guys think Matthew or what may have happened to Matthew Weaver. Um, like I said, this case is really sad to me, especially because Matthew lived not too far from where I live. Um, so just having a case that is super close to where you live is um, something that kind of makes the hairs on my back stand up because 
it just comes to tell you that you need to be careful at all times when you're out i see so many girls on their phones and they're not paying attention to their surroundings something could easily happen to you someone can easily snatch you and no one will ever know also i'm really into podcasts so if you guys are into podcasts make sure that you guys tune in to live and die in la that is a podcast that i love and it's actually kind of new so season one already ended and it was on a girl that had gone missing and she ended up dead which is a really interesting case and a really sad case and i just saw last night that they're actually going to be covering Matthew Weaver Jr.'s case, um, which I'm pretty sure it's going to be amazing. Their information is on point to every small detail. So if I were you guys, I would make sure to go ahead and hear that podcast and watch out for Matthew Weaver's case. Well, that is going to be it for this video. I really hope that you guys liked me making these kinds of videos if you guys did please make sure to give it a thumbs up i'm not sure exactly how frequently will i be able to make these videos or um to do them because i don't know if you guys like them but if you guys do make sure to give it a thumbs up and also please comment down below if you guys have any suggestions i love to improve my videos and if you guys could help me out that would mean the world so with that being said, please stay safe out there. Please make sure that you're aware of all your surroundings and I will see you guys on my next video. Bye guys.